Hey everyone, welcome to part 3 of this Managing Containers review for the RHCSA. So far, we've covered all of the objectives except for building container files and generating systemd units, so that's what this video is for. We'll learn some of the Docker file syntax by writing our own container file that builds into a customized Nginx image. Then we'll provision a container with the image and manage that container through systemd as a user service. As you can tell, we have some cool stuff to do. So let's begin. First, go ahead and make sure that your old HTTPD container from the previous video is stopped and removed. We need to do this so that we can get port 4080 back, which is what we'll be using again in this video. As you can see, if I run podman ps-a, I've removed all of my containers, and so I'm good to go. Cool. Now we'll create a container file. So. Keep in mind that the objectives don't currently say that we need to know how to write a container file. This is just uh, to further our understanding. Now, to make a Docker file slash container file, it's a good idea to create a directory for it to live in with all of its resources. So I'll just make dir a directory called nx image for nginx image, and then I'll cd into there. Next, I'll create a text file called container file. So I'll just use vim and start editing right now container file. And so usually the first thing you'd want to put in a file like this is the from instruction. This is where we specify the existing image we want to base our container off of. We can give something specific here like registry.redhat.io forward slash ubi9 forward slash ubi dash minimal. And we can also give it a specific tag like 9.1.0. Um, cool. Uh, from there, we can use the run instruction to execute commands for our layer that builds off of the existing image UBI minimal. So for this image, I will run micro DNF install dash y engine x. So uh, the dash y will automatically accept the prompt to install the package, which is good because we need to automate this. Then I'm going to add another run command to clear out the nginx document directory so we have a fresh slate to put our files. So rm-r user share nginx um, html star, and that'll remove the files. And now we can use the copy instruction to copy some files which we'll create that'll go in our container. So we're going to create a file called index.html. Um, in just a moment, and we'll copy it into user share nginx html, just like that. We're also going to copy a script called startup.sh, um, and uh, we're going to put this in the root of our new image. We're almost there. Um, one more thing is that it's a good idea to put in the expose instruction. Um, this will just clarify that the application running in this container listens on port 80. So I'll just say expose 80. Lastly, we can use the cmd instruction to specify what initial command should be ran when the container starts. So for that, I'll just put in slash startup.sh. And there we go, we're done. So this is a super simple container file, but it'll suit well enough for this demo. So I'll just write and put the file. And next, we'll create those files that we need to copy into our new image. So touch index.html and startup.sh. So we'll edit that index.html file first. So I'm just going to make this say something like, uh, wow. But you could put whatever you want, of course. And then I'll just write and put the file. So that's all for that one. Um, and then we're going to create a quick script called startup.sh. So, of course, put your shebang at the top, bin bash. And then we're going to type in exec user sbin nginx dash g, and then in quotes put in daemon off with a semicolon. So this will exec nginx, where exec means that the nginx process will essentially swallow the bash process running the script. And the dash g and daemon off 
will tell the main Nginx process not to daemonize, because if it did, then stopping the container wouldn't work as smoothly because um, the Nginx daemon won't be PID1 anymore. This is important since uh, if we want to run a command like podman stop, uh, we want the sig term signal to go to the Nginx process, not bash. Um, there's one more completely optional thing that I'll just type up here, and it'll be to demonstrate the environment variable passing features of podman. So I'll just type this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, and you might be wondering, what does this big old if statement do? Well, basically, it checks to see if we put any information in a variable called custom message, and it'll proceed if we did. If that condition's met, it will check for the existence of a file called custom message.done, and if it doesn't exist, then it proceeds to the following commands. So uh, we're basically just echoing a custom message to our index.html file, and once we're done doing that, we'll create a file called custom message.done in the root directory. So I'm sure after explaining what each command is doing, it should be more clear what this does. Um, we're writing a variable to a file, and we're only making sure we ever do it once in the lifetime of the container. The reason we don't just echo the message without any of this conditional um, is because there might not be a message variable in the first place, and we only want to make sure this command happens once, because if we run podman stop and podman start, the message will be appended twice, which is just messy and redundant. So I hope that made sense. So uh, we'll get out of here. And uh, remember to run chmod plus x startup.sh to make it executable. Also quickly make sure that you're logged into the redhat.io repository. You'll need to do this if you had rebooted your VM like I did. This is supposed to be like a security feature, I guess. So podman login registry.redhat.io. And then I'll just enter in my credentials. Just like that. There we go. And now we're ready to build this image. So simply run podman build and then give the directory of the container file. So that'll just be our current directory with a dot. And then we can give a tag with dash t and call our image something. So I'll go ahead and call it nx image and we'll separate by a colon and give a release name called testing. So, um, now, uh, by running this command, it should begin pulling the image and building it. So it might take some time for it to do so, so be patient. Um, let's see here. It's going pretty quickly for me, so that's good. And um, there we go. So now if we run podman images, uh, voila, we have our new NX image container image right here. Um, so we can start it up with podman run dash dash name and we'll give it a name like my nx1 and then we'll pass a dash d for detach a dash p for publish and we'll use port 4080 like we were doing before and we'll um, assign it to port 80 in the guest and um, this will be new we're going to give a dash e for environment variable and specify our custom message variable like we said in the script and um, I'll make it equal happy birthday there we go um, you can put whatever you want and then last we'll give our image so that's nx image colon testing okay cool so um, now our containers running and if we check our browser for app server 4 port 4080 there we go. Uh, we should see our web page. And so there's our custom message as well that we specified when we ran our container. And if we hadn't specified a message when we ran it, we wouldn't see the second line at all. So that's what that script was doing. So there we go. We built our own container image and it does something slightly novel or useful, I guess. Um, what we'll do now is generate a systemd service around this container. So to do this, um, you're going to want to enable user lingering. This allows services to run under our user without uh, the user being logged on, which is always a good thing for persistence. We can see right now that lingering is disabled with login ctl show-user admin 
and right here at the bottom it says linger equals no. So we can enable lingering with sudo login ctl enable dash linger admin and then just enter your password and now if we check again lingering is ticked on to yes. Great. Um, now what we're going to need to do is create a directory in our user's home folder where the unit files can go. So I'll just cd back to home and we'll run make dir dash p for parents and then uh, home dot config slash systemd slash user and then we'll cd into that directory. So config systemd user and from here we're going to run podman generate systemd dash dash name and give the name that we assigned to our container so that's my nx1 and then do dash dash files and then dash dash new so dash dash files will place the unit file in our current directory and dash dash new will tell systemd to create and remove the containers when we start and stop the service I found that this tends to work pretty reliably. So I'll just run this, and now we'll ls what's in here, and there is our .service file. So now we can stop and remove our existing running container with podman stop my nx1, and then we'll also remove it with podman rm my nx1. Then we can run systemctl dash dash user daemon dash reload to get systemd to recognize our new unit file. And then finally we can run systemctl dash dash user uh, start container my nx1 dot service. And there we go, now it's started. Um, so we can check on our status by doing systemctl user status and um, things are looking pretty good. Uh, we can see that it's running. We can also check that with podman ps, um, and there it is, it's running. Um, pretty cool. So now that we know that it's working, we can make this persistent with systemctl dash dash user enable uh, container my nx one dot service. And now it's enabled. And lastly, we can just check our website and make sure that it's running. So I'll refresh the page and it's still working, working well. Um, and if I quickly stop the service with systemctl user stop container myNX1.service, um, let's see here, uh, the site is not running anymore. So yeah, uh, it's gone. Um, as I'm sure you'll agree, this was pretty cool. So thanks for following along with the series and learning about Podman containers with me, and uh, goodbye.